whole area that we, we hear a lot of and it's so evident that there is a problem with touch. For an awful lot of people who might be on the autistic spectrum, touch is a real issue. Um, touch and pressure. So tell us more about that. Yes, there's a problem here for us actually in that we use the word touch mm. for touch, like touch like that, mm. but also yeah. like pressure. Yeah. Now, pressure, this problem of pressure is properly called proprioceptive difficulties. And if you were to stand on your toes, um, you would feel pressure in your joints and muscles, which will tell you, I'm standing on my toes. Mm. What would be the proprioceptive messages you're getting at the minute? At the moment, I'm sitting on a chair, I'm feeling the weight of my body through my bottom on the chair. Um, if I lean back, again, I know that I'm leaning back. Yes. Actually, and... My knees are bent. And... And my heels are on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. really. But so what you really actually get first is not, I am sitting on a chair, mm -hmm. but you're getting those messages from your yes. muscles and your joints, and your brain tells you that you are yes. sitting on the chair or standing on yes. your toes. Now, the whole point about this is it tells you what you're doing. Yes. The brain looks at the sort of sensory map it's getting, proprioceptive mm -hmm. map it's getting, pressure map. Mm -hmm. And that tells us, tells you what you're doing. The problem for many people with autism is, A, they are oversensitive to touch, which is one set of senses. Yes. B, they are undersensitive to pressure, uh, yeah. which are the proprioceptive messages. Okay. So, so they're, they're different yeah. sets of senses yes. which are telling them different messages. We go and use one word for both mm. touch and pressure, mm. and it causes a lot of confusion. Mm. So it's actually it, very helpful to have um, such a clear description of the touch and the pressure separately, yes, so having a word for quite pressure. Quite exactly. Yeah. Mm. The point about pressure is it tells you what you're doing in space and where you are. Mm. And ma many, many people with autism are low, not oversensitive, but undersensitive mm. to Pressure, pressure messages, mm. proprioception. Mm. So they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So in order to counter that, they will rock or yeah. they will run or try and climb the walls or yes. jump, yes. all those sort of things. Trying to, yes, mm. trying to give Gentle, themselves yeah. pressure messages. Mm -hmm. Or they will actually scratch their head. Now, you might not think that's a pressure message, but of course it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You actually fee get the feeling, mm -hmm. and it's these feelings um, of pressure which are so important. And this, these things are the language which are telling them what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so they will try and give themselves very powerful yeah. proprioceptive messages. Now, if your child is rocking or running or, or doing all these things, um, you, you will... Um, uh, you will know their low on proprioception, basically. That's why they're doing that. And does so. that go for fidgeting as well? Somebody who is incredibly fidgety and wants to yes, sit I on their think chairs. Yes, and they, they don't. Hands, yes. they, they're just trying to feel mm -hmm. where they are. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, really difficult um, for them. And so they, they want to give themselves a very strong proprioceptive message. Our, from our end... The way in is to give them stronger ones. Mm. So we do trampoline, we do swings, we do vibration and so on. Um, and pressure vests and, and all that sort of thing. And shoes with ridges in them are mm -hmm. helpful mm -hmm. uh, for people who are you know, um, inclined. They just don't know where their feet are. And of course, it also has a problem with boundaries. I don't know where I stop when so, you start. Yes, yes. So you are in totally invasive. I don't wish to be... <laughs> you're, you're, yes. Um, yes. Uh, and, because I'm, 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 I'm this. this and person, so a lot of yeah. them actually can mm -hmm. work. Some of them can work much better if you've got a screen, a plastic mm -hmm. screen between you. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with one chap, and he would uh, never come in the house. Mm. And uh, but occasionally he'd bang on the windows, and he, if anybody looked up, he would laugh. Um, and I got my student, um, <laughs> if one of these curious coincidents, I just somebody, there was a sheet of polycarbonate from a car window. Mm -hmm. And so I got her to put it on her lap. And every time he went past, I, bang, I got her to bang on it. And uh, 
for the first time he came in and had uh-huh. a look at what at what she was doing. And the second time we went there, um, she came, she put it on her lap and sat there sort of waiting. And he came running in and he banged it on her and looked at her and then laughed. Yeah. You know, um, so he was actually coming in. Yes. He could manage if there was, if a, there was screen, a screen, which he could he could feel. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, so he knew where he stopped and she started. Yes. Without this having is, to feel intruded upon or intruded or upon one, her. Well, an- anxious that yes. uh, she. And yes. a friend of mine who has autism said, uh, "You know, I just sort of merge into other people, and they merge into me. I, I very often don't know where I am and they are." Yes. And that sounds so. Illogical to somebody who doesn't bizarre, have that experience. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. How can you not know where you end? Well, the only exactly. way I know where I end is because my interpretation of my proprioceptive messages is working absolutely. in a conventional it's way. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what do we do? We try and give them these messages. Mm-hmm. And people say, oh yes, they go on trampoline once a week and they absolutely love it. Research shows that if you want to make a difference, you've got to have it three times a day, three or four times a day. Mm. And so um, what I'm asking people to do is to put them on, um, for example, the trampoline um, uh, for 10 minutes mm. uh, at the beginning of the day and throughout the day in the school yeah. as well as at home. Yeah. It's really important because what you're trying to do is you're trying to give them a, a bang, bang, bang. It's the jerk. Yes. which actually gives them the... And it's the predictability and the rhythm exactly. of jumping. For some people who, for trampolining, isn't practical or they don't like it, just going for a run, going for a walk, yes, exactly. carrying bags, you know, yes, just, exactly. just just let's walk around the house, you know, let's, let's deliver the laundry to upstairs. But let's... even so, it's actually the regular jerk, yes. which is, yeah. is much more effective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I worked with a, a boy... Who wouldn't? In fact, it was the boy who was digging his fingers in. And after I'd given him pressure back, mm-hmm. do you remember his thumb? When I said, "How do you do?" Um, he he dug his thumb into my thing. But after I then went on to use his sounds, and he became much more interested. And then I pointed to the trampoline in the garden because I realised by that time he was low on mm-hmm. proprioceptive messages. Mm-hmm. And I pointed to the and I stood there and. and wiggled my knees up and down, yes. you know. And he went out immediately, he started laughing and he went out to the trampoline mm. and he got on it. And then he, he he came over to the boundary netting and he put his nose against it mm-hmm. and I put mine and we were able to have a really, really clean. He was really laughing yes. and enjoying this very close contact, yes. which he hadn't been able to manage at all, yeah. or his first messages were back off, mm, mm. because I was frightened. Yes, but when he's got enough proprioceptive messages that he can interpret as and, letting him and know... And there's a boundary. And there's a boundary, so we're tending to more than one issue here at yeah. once, aren't we? That actually his levels of anxiety are so low, he can allow himself to get physically absolutely. close to you. Well, there is yes, a thin boundary, absolutely. and he knows where he is. Yes, exactly. is absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it's very important to, you know, to give them big proprioceptive mm. inputs. Mm. I worked with a small child... I suppose he was about six, eight, perhaps. He came into class and he would sit in the corner and he'd have a cushion and he'd hug it Mm -hmm. and he'd rock and he'd cry. He wouldn't join in any of the groups Mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, they they had no contact with him basically all day except his his noise. And uh, I, I said, you know, just talk. I know that he, I could see he was, um, having problems with um, auditory messages mm. in one ear. He was hypersensitive to mm. sound, mm. so he was jerking away. These flinches are so important. It's the flinches you want to look for because they will tell you what it is. You don't need long um, investigations no. and meetings and so forth. Just watch the child while you're working with them. Mm. The flinches will tell you what it is that they are hypersensitive to. Anyway, I said, talk me through what happens to this little boy when he comes to school. Well, we take him off the bus. He obviously doesn't want to get into school, you know. <laughs> has to be dragged off the bus. 
and um, we take him into the hall and there's a meeting and then he goes to classroom and I say well I want you to do it differently I want you to um, take him off the bus take him in the side door don't go anywhere near the hall mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then put him on the trampoline for 10 minutes mm-hmm. and then take him into class and lo and behold when he went into class he went and sat with all the other kids yeah. as simple as that now what had happened because you see he gets the jerk while he's on the trampoline, but you might say he doesn't get the jerk thereafter. But what happens is, so often in the brain um, of someone with autism, the messages continue mm-hmm. to be sent, so that he is getting a sensory experience of the jerk long after the jerk has actually happened. This is known as perseveration. Yes. And it's very important yeah. in, or, in autism because the brain continues to send messages after the source has actually disappeared. Yes. I've known it happened to up to, up to 10 hours. Yes. And uh, uh, this, this child, what happens is he gets on the trampoline, he gets bang, bang, bang. Mm. He gets off the trampoline, the brain perseverates, so he continues to get the bang, 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 mm-hmm. bang, 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 bang. But eventually it fades. So he needs it again. It's like, it's like topping up a smart card. Yes. Front-loading, I've heard it described as. I'm front-loading this child with, with as much proprioceptive certainty as he needs to get him through a certain period. But yes. then I need... To do it again for that's him. absolutely yeah yes, that's yes, right. yeah yeah um, Richard Maguire uh, who you mentioned yeah. earlier um, with his oh, uh, visual yes, processing yes. he talked about how um, as a child he was a, he was a tiptoe walker because tiptoe walking and jumping gave him that sense of where yeah. he was but he knew that people wanted to stop him jumping yeah. um, even to the extent of giving him built up shoes so he couldn't do it on, on his tiptoes and he said it just made him have to seek other ways of oh, providing it yes, because if I know you're going to stop me you're coming towards me I know you're going to stop me with my tiptoe walking my goodness I've got to do a lot of it um, in the three seconds I've got before you get to me yeah. to stop me doing it Richard also um is a terrific cyclist mm-hmm. and he said I really know what I'm doing when I'm holding a bicycle because I've got two points of contact here mm-hmm. two points in my shoe and one in the groin and yeah. there's five points of contact and I know exactly what I'm doing so that when he came to give a talk yeah. he was actually holding his bicycle all the time mm-hmm. yes he wasn't on it but he had it with yes, him yes exactly because it gives him that sense it of, gave of him that certainty. sense of secure, certainty yeah. mm-hmm. um, it's extremely de- important that we meet these proprioceptive means mm-hmm. because you get kids who run around classrooms who disrupt things mm-hmm. who are running away mm-hmm. climbing climbing walls are very helpful yes um, oh, one oh. Sorry, can yeah. I just? Uh, you, you're making me think of somebody um, that, that that we work with who um, has autism. He has a vision impairment. He's he's a wheelchair user. And uh, one thing we did recently, thinking along these lines, you know those wonderful cushions, sort of rubber cushions you get. They've got sort of uh, bobbles on them, yeah. um, and and they you, you have to sort of balance yes, on way, them yeah. a bit. And when he had one of those on his wheelchair and he was sitting on his wheelchair, he took his feet out from under, his feet are often drawn up, yeah. and he put his feet down and he put them firmly down on and the ground. Went, yeah. yeah. And the other thing he always does is he bites his hand. Yeah. And actually when he had this increased sense of, oh, this is where I am, he didn't have to bite his hand. Well, that's visibly, the same as the yeah. woman I was using vibration yes. on her back. Yes. Because yeah. it was giving her a sense of what... Yeah. where she was and it's something she simple. didn't have to bash her head no and he didn't have to bite his hand yeah. when he had a cushion to sit on yes. and again it sounds illogical or bizarre but when you understand the proprioceptive messages this young man was having to give himself by by curling up his knees and biting his hand given a cushion to sit on that he can get that proprioceptive feedback he doesn't have to do that it, it just looked like such a relief to him <laughs> Um, Judith Bluestone in her book um, uh, The Fabric of Autism Mm. talks about how she used a pogo stick and for years she went round on a pogo stick embarrassing her sister no end but it gave her that jerk she she was a person with autism who became a neurologist Mm. and Mm -hmm. so she was able to study this and she was absolutely convinced that what they were after was the jerk Mm. or very powerful Mm. physical Mm. input Mm.